Amen, amen, amen. We come this morning to worship our God, to lift up holy hands in his sight. Amen. For truly our God is worthy of glory. Our God is worthy of honor. Our God, he is worthy of all of the praise. And we give it to him this morning. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've come to give him worship. I've come to give him praise. Hallelujah. I've come to lift my hands unto the Lord for our God. He is worthy. He is worthy of all of our praise. All of those who are here in the sanctuary and all of those who are watching us by way of social media. However, hallelujah, you're, 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 you're uh, experiencing this worship service. We, we pray that God's richest blessings are all on your life and in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. We know that it's still a lot of snow outside this morning, amen, hallelujah, so be careful for those if you're making your way uh, to the sanctuary, just be careful, and then for those uh, who are at home, why don't you prepare, hallelujah, your heart, prepare your home, prepare your head, you get, get ready for worship, amen, get ready this morning to worship the Lord with us, and let's worship Him in spirit, and let's worship Him Let's worship our God in the truth, because our God is worthy. Somebody say he's worthy. Hallelujah. Somebody say he's worthy. He's worthy of all of the glory. He's worthy of all of the honor. And our God, he's worthy of all of the praise. We, we just lift him up. Hallelujah. And we magnify the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but there's nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. There's none like our God. There's none like our King. There's none like our Lord. There's nobody. There's nobody like our Jesus. He keeps on making a way. He keeps on doing great things. Hallelujah. So why don't you, if you're watching by way of social media, invite somebody to worship God with you this morning. Hallelujah. Invite somebody to just worship God with you this morning. Share a like and comment. Hallelujah. This morning as we come today on the first Sunday of the second month of the year. God has been so good to us. Amen. In spite of storms and hallelujah. In spite of COVID and in spite of whatever else we may have been going through. God is good. Can somebody declare that God is good?
know that God loves you. Hallelujah. In fact, He loves you first. Hallelujah. Before you ever love Him, God loves you. He loves you so much that He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. He sent Him to die on an old rugged cross just for you and just for me. Amen. Amen. That he might take the wrath of God upon himself. And because of that, those of us who trust and believe in him, that we might not, hallelujah, have to endure the wrath of God for the sin of our sins. Hallelujah. But Jesus took them upon himself. On that old way he cross, he died. And he got up on the third day. With all power in his hand. Amen. He has power over life. He has power over death. He has all power. All power in his hand. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand to our praise. Amen. Amen. So that Yana is going to come. She's going to sing us a word of hymn of meditation. Amen. And after she comes, we'll have, we'll have a reading. Our scripture will be from the 18th number of the Psalms. So the, the Psalms, the 18th number and the 30th verse. Amen.
Hallelujah. And he yelled at, at, at the young lady as if she could hear him through the television. He said, what are you waiting for? Jump. Uh, but she didn't jump. And, and if not for Spider-Man being there with his web, hallelujah, she would have ended, hallelujah, her life in that moment. But CJ discovered something when he discovered that she failed to jump. And he discovered, unbeknownst to him, that the character, the young lady in the movie, had a character flaw. Yeah, her flaw was that she had to stop Sister Dina and think about things, hallelujah, in the midst of her being in trouble. And she knew what to do, but she just wouldn't do it. She had to stop and think about it. And oftentimes, the, 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 the ability for us to move forward in life with God, oftentimes we stop, hallelujah, in the midst of impending danger, to try to see if that was the right thing to do and in literary works, whether a book or a play or a television series or a movie, a character flaw is a trait that prevents a character from being perfect in, in creation and, and, and in criticism of fictional works. A character flaw is a bias or a limitation or an imperfection. It's a problem. It's a personality disorder. It's a vice or a phobia. It's a prejudice or, or a deficiency that's present in a character who may, hallelujah, be otherwise very functional. In other words, a person, let me see if I can help you. I had a roommate when I was in college. His name was Barry. Barry, hallelujah, was an alcoholic. Uh, Barry stayed with us. He drank. Deacon is fine from the time he got up to the time he went to be it. Uh, Barry was an alcoholic, but, but Barry uh, was functional. Barry was what we call a functional alcoholic. Barry, hallelujah, would get up. He was a roofer. He would get up on roofs every day at six in the morning. He would never miss work. He was functional with everything he did, but as soon as he got off work, he took that bottle and that bottle took him to sleep. He got back up, hallelujah. He was functional, hallelujah. He was a functional alcoholic. He had a character flaw. Hallelujah. His flaw was his alcohol, but he didn't allow hallelujah, his character flaw to stop him from being functional. And some of us, hallelujah, I would venture to say all of us, hallelujah, have some flaw. Hallelujah. In life, it ain't just buried with the flaw. All of us, if we're honest with ourselves, have a flaw. And let me suggest to you today that if you look at something long enough, you will find a flaw in it. Amen. I wish somebody were here this morning. You'll notice if you look at something, hallelujah, long enough, if you look at this sign up here long enough, you'll, you'll notice that it's an eighth of an inch off. Uh, if you look at that door back there, you might say it's a quarter of an inch off because, hallelujah, all of us, if not most of us, have gotten so good at identifying flaws that that's all that some of us do when we look out as we identify the character flaws, hallelujah, in the things that we see. I read an article Three days ago, Sister Michelle read the article, hallelujah, was talking about a flaw in my iPhone. Mm. Yeah, yeah, there were two companies that, that discovered that, they, that, that they, 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 they can break into your phone. They called it a forced entry. They could get into your phone without you even opening your phone up. And they could send messages and take messages from your phone because everything that is created, hallelujah, by man in life has a flaw. Yeah, I know you thought you were perfect. I know, hallelujah, you thought, hallelujah, you got it going on and that you didn't, hallelujah, have any imperfections. And I hate to bust your bubble today, but all of us are flawed. Yeah, yeah, there is nothing. That, that has been made by men that does not have flaw. And there are some 
that are able to find flaws in things, but there are others that, 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 that are good at finding flaws in people. Ah, uh, keep looking this way. They might be sitting next to you. In fact, if you, hallelujah, around someone long enough, or if you live with someone long enough, you too will notice that the person that you are sitting next to, the person that you're in relationship with has... Yeah, they have some flaws. You, what you will discover is that that person that you're in relationship with has flaws. Whether we recognize that I'm not everybody and everything in life has flaws. But in our text today, I, I, I'm glad that David shares with us in our text today that, that there is indeed something in this life that is without a blemish. David shares with us in our text today that there is something in this life that is without imperfection. David shares with us, hallelujah, in our text today that there is something, hallelujah, that we have in life that has no mistakes or no shortcomings. And in Psalm 18, David sings this song of praise after God delivers him, hallelujah, from the hand of Saul. And as David reflects, Hallelujah. On his life on the run in this song, David concludes, hallelujah, that the word of God is tried. It is right there in, in verse number 30. Verse 30 says it, hallelujah, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. The word tried in the text simply means flawless. It simply means it's been proven. Hallelujah. And, and all David, hallelujah, is saying is, is that every day as you keep putting, hallelujah, on the word of God, that the word of the Lord is making you flawless. Hallelujah. Let me see if I can help you. Hallelujah. Because there are some, 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 some times when we get dressed up to go out. Hallelujah. We get all dressed up and, and we and women get their nails done and they put makeup on and they, they put hallelujah a pendant on and they may put on earrings and, and then somebody will look at them and undoubtedly say, You look Yeah, flawless. Yeah, yeah, you you look flawless. Hallelujah. And David is trying to help us to understand that, that, that we, hallelujah, as we put the word of God on us, the flawless word of God, as we get it into our life, that the word of God is able to make you and I flawless. Yeah. In other words, whether you realize it or not, the word when you, hallelujah, put it to work in your life is removing your flaws and like gold that is tried in the fire, the word of God, when you put it in your life, is removing impurities from your life. In other words, when you're in the Word of God, the Word of God is purifying you and it's working to make you flawless. As David looks back over his life in this song, you need to know that the things that you may be experiencing in life or that you are going through in life, maybe God is using it to remove your flaws. God, David is saying that in order to move from flaw to flawless, that the master has to use some circumstances that will shape you into the flawless jewel that he created you to be. Hallelujah, that may be why you're experiencing heat and pressure, hallelujah, and it seems like uh, it's coming uh, from every side. Uh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Let me see if I can help you, hallelujah. In order for a diamond to be formed, uh, it has to be in the ground. Hallelujah. In fact, the temperature for a diamond to be formed has to be 2,500 degrees. Hallelujah. Fahrenheit. That's, that's hot, y'all. It has to be really hot in order for a diamond to be formed. And some of you want to be diamonds. 
You pray to God, God, make me shine. Hallelujah. You said, God, make me clear. Hallelujah. God, cut me. Hallelujah. God, make my clarity so that I don't have any imperfection. You didn't say it like that. You said, if you find anything that's not like you, I ask you, Lord, you know what to do. Watch me, Lord. Cleanse me through and through. Take it away from me, Lord. All you were simply asking to do was for God to make you a diamond. Hallelujah. But if you're going to be a made of diamond, you got to understand that you got to have some heat applied to your life. If you want to be a diamond, not only must there be heat applied to your life, but, but in the earth, hallelujah, gravity works from and, and pushes it down. Hallelujah. And so you're being crushed from the top. Hallelujah. But you're also being pushed up from the bottom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, all around you, it feels like you're being crushed up and it feels like pressure is all around you. But if you want to be a diamond, hallelujah, that's how diamonds are formed. They're formed by the heat being turned up. Somebody say it's hot in here. It's hot in here. It's hot in here. Hallelujah. It is formed by the pressure of God being applied to your life. And David was wondering, hallelujah, why God, why am I on the run from Saul? Why God, why God does he keep on chasing me? Why God, why God won't my enemies leave me alone? Why God, why God is all of this happening in my life? Why God am I going through financial heartache and hardship? Why God do people around me seem like they keep transitioning? Why God, why am I experiencing hell at home, oh God, and hell on my job, God? Why, oh why God is all of this? taking place in my life. Hallelujah. As God said in order that you might become 24 karat gold. Hallelujah. Because in order for it to become pure gold, that's 24 karat gold, they have to heat it up. Hallelujah. And when they heat up the gold and melt it, they're able to scrape off the, the hallelujah, impurities that are in the gold. And God is saying that when you have this word on the inside of you, that his word is removing impurity so that you might be flawless. Hallelujah. His word is crushing you that you might be flawless. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I want to be flawless. David helps us to see that the word of God is flawless, but then he helps us to see that the word of God is felicitous. Felicitous simply means Hallelujah, that is perfect. Hallelujah. That, that, that the way of the Lord is perfect. It's right there in the text. As for God, his way is perfect. Way in the text speaks of the methods that God uses to transform my life. David says God's way is suited for my circumstances. His way is perfect. Hallelujah. Somebody say his way is perfect. Uh, and the methods that God chooses to take me, hallelujah, hallelujah, from someone that has potential to someone that is polished uh, is powerful. Here it is. God's way uh, is perfect. See, see, the world will try to convince you uh, that you're experiencing a rough patch in, on the road uh, means that God's way ain't right. Uh, and the world will try to, hallelujah, convince you uh, that if you have have a little heartache and, and you have, hallelujah, some pain and trouble, uh, that God's way uh, ain't the way for you, hallelujah, and the world will try to convince you uh, that you got to find your own way, uh, but the Bible says, hallelujah, in Proverbs 14 and 12, Minister Dawson, there is a way which seems right unto a man, uh, but the end thereof uh, are the ways of destruction, uh, in other words, uh, you can't keep trying uh, to do this thing uh, your own way. 
Yeah, just because I may be experiencing some traffic on the road of life does not mean that God's way is not perfect. Hallelujah. Like David, you may experience your share of pain while in the way of the Lord. It does not mean that God's way ain't perfect. Hallelujah. David experienced his fair share of disappointments while walking in God's way. Uh, and in spite of being hunted, uh, here in the text, David says his way is perfect. In spite of being pressed on every side, uh, hallelujah, after he got out of it, David was able to say uh, his way uh, is perfect. Hallelujah. And in spite of what he was experiencing uh, with his walk with God, uh, David was able to say uh, in concluding uh, everything that he'd been through uh, that God's way uh, is perfect. And I wonder if there's anybody in this place uh, that can Say like David said, uh, yeah, though I walk uh, through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I will fear no evil, uh, for thou art with me. Your way, God, is, somebody say, perfect. Yeah, David walked in the way of the Lord, and, and his life demonstrates for us that when you walk, hallelujah, in the way of the Lord, that you will have some problems, hallelujah. But, but just because you face problems in walking with the Lord, it does not mean that God's way is not perfect, David's life demonstrates for us that just because you walk in the perfect way of the Lord, it does not mean that some imperfect stuff can happen in your life. Yeah, he helps us to understand that God's way is perfect, uh, even though I might not always feel like it's perfect. He shares with us, you may feel lost on the road of life, and you may experience some issues on the road of life, but it does not mean that God's way is not perfect. The other day, uh, we were on the road and, and entered into a new neighborhood, and and I had to, in a new neighborhood, I had to get out the GPS. And I like ways. Anybody like ways? Yeah, I like using ways. Yeah, I love using the ways app because it helps me to get to where I go, where I'm going. And the thing that I love about ways is not only that it provides you with step by step directions to your destination, but it also shares information about hazards that are coming up on the road, whether it's an accident, a stall car on the side of the road, hallelujah, a, an accident, or even a speed trap. That's why I like it the best, y'all, because I... So most of y'all know I got a need for speed. I love it the best, hallelujah, because it tells us what's ahead, hallelujah. If there's a speed trap, Waze works to get you to your destination. But here it is. I discovered, Sister Michelle, that Waze ain't always right. Yeah, I discovered that about ways, ways, because there were times when I got to the place where Waze said there was a stall car and was no car there. But oh, Waze ain't perfect. There, there were times when I got to the place where Waze said there's a speed trap and I slowed down and I didn't really have to because there was no speed trap there. But 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 hallelujah, David helps us to understand that but, but there is a GPS system that will lead you on your way that is perfect GPS God's powerful scripture hallelujah will always provide you with information that is both factual and relevant GPS God's powerful scripture will always provide you with information hallelujah that is accurate and that will get you to your destination GPS God's powerful scripture will lead you to the place that God wants you to be and it will transform your life in the process. In fact, God uses, hallelujah, those adversities that we face in life to purify us in life and to remove imperfection from our life. God's powerful scripture helps us to understand that Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life and no man can come to the Father 
Somebody say there's only one way. Hallelujah. God's got a way. And you can't go wrong. Hallelujah. Somebody say there's only one way. Hallelujah. God's got a way. And you can't go over. God's got a way. That you can't go on a God's got a way. That you can't go around. You must come in at the door. You gotta follow God's way. And if I can continue to rely on, on God's powerful scripture, I'll make it to my destination. And here it is. I'll no longer be the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, because, hallelujah, the GPS system, it, it's all it's trying to do is help you get somewhere. Yes. Glory to your name, God. All it's trying to do is to help you to get to, to the destination that God has destined for you. Yes. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever, I'm making my way to God's house. Hallelujah. And on the road, I will experience some stuff. Hallelujah. On the road of life. But here is what I love about God. Not just that his word is flawless. And not just that his way is felicitous. It's present. Hallelujah. And it's perfect. But I love God because the rest of the verse says, hallelujah, hallelujah, he's a buckler to all those that trust in him. In other words, God is faithfully at work. Hallelujah. A buckler simply means a shield. The word shield in the text signifies that God has me covered. Hallelujah. The word in the text simply helps me to understand that. Hallelujah. That, that God protects me. Hallelujah. The word in the text means, hallelujah, that God is watching over me. Hallelujah. All night. All day. Angels are watching over me. Hallelujah. The text helped me to understand that I might be and face some trouble when I'm on the road of life. But I love God because there are some things that he'll shield me from. There are some things that he'll from uh, and I don't know about you uh, but I'm glad today uh, that God uh, has protected me uh, that God uh, has covered me uh, that God uh, has shielded me uh, I'm thankful to God because uh, there was some stuff uh, that should have took me out uh, but the Lord, He shielded me. There was something that I should not be here today. But the Lord put a hand all around me. There was something that should have had me down. But I thank God that God is covering me. The song says he covers me under his feathers, under his wings. Do I take refuge? His faithfulness will be my shield and my rampart. In other words, the faithfulness of God. Uh, he says uh, in his word uh, that he will not uh, leave me by myself, uh, but he's watching uh, over me. Uh, he holds uh, the success uh, in store uh, for the upright, uh, his shield uh, to those uh, who walk uh, he shields me. I thank God for you, Lord. I will shield around me. The Lord has the lift up of my head. And I say thank you for lifting up my head. Everybody, the one who 
And if that's you today, won't you come? Won't you come and be a part of the family of Jesus Christ, the body of believers called Christians, amen? Here at Progressive Community Church. If you have questions, see us afterwards. Any of those standing up in the house, you have questions about salvation, you can see any of them. Hallelujah. After the service, if you're watching by way of social media, and you have questions about how to be saved, why don't you just send us a message? We'll get back with you and share with you how to become saved. Amen. Sit at the eye. Now we know that there's room at the cross. You may be seated. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Now is the time where we sow our seeds. I ask that you would get your seed in your hand. Hallelujah. When you get it in your hand, lift it high. Hallelujah. Lift it high. Amen. We sow both spiritual seeds and physical seeds. A spiritual seed is faith and love. I dare you to name your spiritual seed. Put your seed in your hand and just lift it high and repeat after me. This is my seed. I did not deserve it. But God so graciously provided it unto me. Therefore, I will sow my seed. I will sow my seed. I will sow my seed in obedience to God's word and expectation of the harvest. 100% obedience to God. 100% obedience to tithing. 100% faith. Amen. 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 Let's be in prayer for the Hartfield family. Many of you have gotten messages from me about this transition and Pastor Hartfield. He was the he was the second pastor in the life of, of this church. Amen. 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 We'll be celebrating 73 years. Amen. This month. And Pastor Hartfield pastored 15 of those 73 years. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's, let's keep his family lifted up in prayer. Amen. He had a very strong and powerful, very strong and powerful ministry. Amen. 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 Very strong and very powerful ministry. So we keep, we keep it lifted up in prayer. So over the next 30 days, church will be in mourning. Amen. Amen. We'll be in mourning over the next 30 days. Amen. That's biblical. And that's what we'll that's what we'll be doing. Come on up, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for the people who are here. 
who were able, Lord God, to plant a seed, whether it was physical or spiritual, a seed was planted. And that seed, Lord God, we're asking you to multiply. Multiply the seed, Lord God, to build your kingdom so that people will be saved and healed and delivered. So that people will know that you are real and that what we do is not from us. Lord God, it's from you. So bless us, Lord God. We thank you today. In Jesus' name, amen.
for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. For this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily Eat it and drink it, then they should to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we will judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that he come not together unto condemnation. The Apostle Paul said, the rest will be set in order when he comes. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you on today that your son, you sent him to this earth, not limited to a death and a burial and a resurrection, but you sent him for life. You sent him to demonstrate what it is to live a life on earth unto the Lord. The miracles, the signs, and the wonders, and everything that he did became therefore a guide on how to live unto the Lord. Lord, we thank you on today that as we partake in the life and in the death and the burial and the resurrection, we also partake in the hope for eternal life in the fact that our Lord rose again. Our Redeemer, our Savior, rose again. Because He rose, you have a hope for healing. Because He rose, you have a hope for eternal life. Your body was broken so that our bodies could be made whole. Your blood was shed, pierced in the side, a crown of thorns placed on your head so that our blood in our body could be made whole. Lord, we thank you on today that we can lay claim to healing and to wholeness in the partaking of the life, the death, burial, resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. And we declare that we are whole on today through it in Jesus' name. Declare your healing on today in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, anyone that still needs communion, raise your hand. Anyone we have one here that does not have it? Amen. Anyone else needs communion? Amen. At this time, you may take your bread. Take your bread that is in your cup. Okay, hold it up and let us eat and partake together. Amen. In the same manner also, he took the cup and after he had given thanks, he said, This do remember of me. Take and drink. Glory to God. Receive your healing on today for the healing of your body. Receive your healing on today for the healing of the blood of Jesus Christ that was broken and that was shed for you in remembrance of him. We thank you on today, God, that it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us give the Lord a clap of praise.
all would like to say those that came to visit us, this is your first time visiting, we say thank you. We don't take it lightly, so we thank you. We thank you all for coming to visit with us today. Those that are watching by the first time through social media, we also say thank you for watching with us this morning. Amen. We're on our prayer line daily at 6 a.m. from Sunday to Sunday. If you'd like to join our prayer line, it's on a Zoom call. Take your bulletin with you. The telephone number and the pin number is there. We have our grief share meeting every Tuesday here in the sanctuary at 4 o'clock p.m. We have our 73rd church anniversary coming up. Amen. It will be Sunday, February 20th at 11.15 a.m. And also we will be having a 4 o'clock p.m. service. Amen. And the offering is $100. We will be celebrating Black History this month. Amen. Amen. On Sunday, February 27th, we have rehearsal here with the children. We have three more rehearsals to go. Our first one was yesterday. We will be rehearsing at the church on Saturday from 12 to 1 o'clock p.m. So please bring your children out. If we have any adults that would like to participate in our um, Black History program, you all are allowed to participate. So if you'd like to, come to the rehearsal and let me know what you'll be doing. Amen. 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 We're also saving captives. If they're clean, please bring them and give them the pastor verse. Amen. Amen. If all our hearts and minds are clear, it's good to see everyone today. And I just want to continue to encourage everyone to continue to press on in the Lord. Amen. If all our hearts and minds are clear. Let us stand. Lord, we bless your name on today. Well, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. We thank you, Lord, that from the rising up of the sun to the going down of the same, that your word should be declared so that everything that has breath will praise you, the Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we can praise you, God, Lord, by expressing ourselves through song. We can praise you, Lord, by expressing ourselves through dance. We can lift you up as we meditate upon the goodness of your word. We thank you for the word of God that has gone forth. We declare in Jesus' name that it is sealed and it has been delivered to accomplish that which you have said and purpose for it to do. We thank you, Lord, that the man of God that has blessed us with this word, that he is filled and restored, God, to continue to do a great work, O oh Lord, to advance the kingdom of God. Now, God, we thank you that on today, that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart, we thank you, Lord, that they are acceptable in thy sight. For you, Lord, are our precious strength. For you, Lord, are our precious redeemer. Until we all shall meet again, let us all say, Amen. 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 Love the one.